So I've been wanting to better understand how the HP interferometer works um, and I think I have a rough idea so I wanted to document my notes. Um, if you've been trying to figure out how it works uh, and I've made a mistake, um, yeah, pl please do comment or like send me an email. Um, but I think, I think I have a rough idea so I wanted to document it in this video. Um, so first of all you have this laser head. Uh, and the laser head is not, it's not a normal laser head, it's a helium neon uh, laser head which uses a Zeeman effect to generate two separate frequencies of light at the same time. And these two frequencies are very nearly the same, but they're, they're, they're a tiny bit different, they're two, kind of two megahertz uh, apart. And the two megahertz is like a tiny frequency fraction of the frequency of light. Light is in the region of 500 terahertz. So, so to have two uh, beams of light that are a couple of megahertz apart is, is a really tiny difference. But not only are these two beams of light uh, a couple of megahertz apart, they're also in opposite polarizations. So one is horizontally polarized and one is vertically polarized. And this comes in handy in the interferometry setup because it allows you to separate out the two beams very easily. So let's start by looking at the uh, at one of the polarizations. It could be the vertical or the horizontal. It doesn't really matter. But this is going to be the, the polarization that we use for the measure, measurement. So this beam heads into the interferometer and it passes through what is known as a polarizing beam splitter. And this, this will reflect one polarization and allow the other polarization to pass through. So this pass polarization passes through, it hits a quarter wave plate, which then reverses the polarization of the light. So it switch, so if it's horizontal, it would sw switch it through to vertical uh, polarization, which means it's now no longer allowed to pass through the polarizing beam splitter, it will be reflected off it. And it reflects off it hits the retroreflector and then heads back to the to the surface, the measurement surface, is uh, is converted again into horizontal polarized light and allowed to head out of the system. So that's the measurement beam and you can see it reflecting off the surface and through the through the system and out again in, um, through yeah the, the opposite side of the interferometer. The reference beam, on the other hand, is very simple. Um, it was in the opposite polarization, so it's always going to be reflected off the polarizing uh, beam splitter. So it just heads in, hits a retroreflector, and then heads out, and that's it. And, so, and that's going to be your um, your reference path. So how do we use all this to do an actual measurement? Um, well. Uh, what we're looking at is we're looking at a, a Doppler shift in the uh, measurement signal. So like a very simple f uh, interferometer, the, the level of interference will change um, with the, the, the differing distance. Um, but that's not the case here. You only see interference when you're getting a do Doppler shift due to the mo motion of the uh, measurement mirror so much like you get like you know with a fire engine uh, or a, an ambulance if it's coming towards you you'll see you'll hear it at a higher frequency and then as it starts moving away from you you'll hear it at a, low, a lower frequency because like the, the sound is, is stretching out as it moves away uh, you get exactly the same thing happening with light so if this surface is moving towards uh, the beam that slightly increases the frequency and if it's moving away from the beam it's going to slightly decrease the frequency um, and we're going to be measuring that difference in frequency between the original uh, sig uh, signal that we get in and this kind of uh, Doppler shifted um, beam. So in the end, we get these two signals. We get the the one that hasn't been Doppler shifted 
FB, it's called here, and then the one that has been Doppler shifted, which is FA plus uh, two times the, the Doppler shifted um, component of a signal. Um, yeah, and that just, uh, that, so those two frequencies are coming out. So in order to calculate the uh, difference, we can't measure those, those frequencies, you know, th those differences in frequency directly because it's such a small um, change. But what we can do is uh, measure how they interfere with each other. Um, so we can measure the interference between the original lower frequency signal and then this Doppler shifted higher frequency signal. Um, and that's and we do that through kind of a, a beat frequency. So when these are coming out, they're still in opposite polarizations. Um, they go through this 45 degree polarizer inside the receiver that squishes them down, so that the same polarization and allows them to kind of inter and allows them to interfere with each other. And when they interfere, they can generate a beat frequency. And there's this cool video on YouTube which I'll link in, which shows you how two kind of similar frequencies. Um, mixed together and result in uh, in a, in, a, in a beat frequency that's superimposed on top of the other one. Originally, it was kind of confusing because it's like the difference is only a few megahertz, and that will be a radio frequency signal. Um, but it's actually a change in amplitude that you're seeing um, superimposed on top of uh, the original uh, frequencies. So the the, the photodiode will see, be seeing a change in intensity of light and that change in intensity will be um, just the difference between these two wavelengths so it will be uh, at 2 megahertz plus a little bit due to the Doppler shift or, or minus a little bit due, due to the Doppler shift um, Yeah, so it would be two, 2 megahertz because that's your original difference and then minus, plus minus a little bit. Um, so, yeah, so you've got your original reference signal which is captured from in, inside the laser. It's also looking at the, the original di beat frequency difference between these two lasers and then at the receiver it's looking at the Doppler shifted difference between these, these two lasers. So you've got this reference one and then this other one that will be a little bit uh, faster or a little bit slower depending on whether the mirror is moving towards you or away from you. So that's my understanding of how it works. I'm sorry if the explanation was not particularly uh, clear but I think at least I understand it and I'd really welcome uh, further comments so please get in touch.